Yesterday, I demonstrated how to wire up OLED screen with ESP8266 and display data on it, like a text or a simple bitmap. Today, the plan is to play around with the input, so instead of receiving the data from microcontroller, getting it displayed on the screen, we're going to provide it. And to make it happen, I'm gonna use buttons. Hello and welcome. This is day 45 of 100 days of code in IoT challenge. I'm Thomas and this is the channel that educates you on IoT and web development. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe so you'll be first in line to get notified whenever I upload the new video. And now, let's get started. So first, let me show you all the hardware components I'm gonna use today. So what we've got here is a breadboard with ESP8266 already attached and I2C or LED screen already connected to it. That's something I have done yesterday. If you haven't watched that video, I really recommend to do so, so you will find out about the details of how to connect it. What I can tell you quickly just now is how uh, this one is connected to the breadboard, to the microcontroller. So here we've got four pins. We've got Grand VCC, SCL, SDA. The ground here is connected to the minus rail of the breadboard that is connected with the ground of the microcontroller, right? So that all goes to the ground. VCC goes to 3v3 on the microcontroller. SCL goes to D1 and SDA is going to D2. Okay, so that's how the screen needs to be connected to the microcontroller. What else I've got here? is these three buttons and the wires to connect them to the microcontroller. These buttons are really the main subject of today's video. They're gonna be used to control what's happening on the screen. This button is gonna be a typing button. So whenever you press on it, there's gonna be a character on the screen changing, right? So you press something, it's gonna change. If you release it for more than one half second, then the cursor is going to jump to the next position and when you start typing again, there's going to be the next character on the screen. The second button is going to be to delete the characters on the screen. So it's going to be like a backspace button on the keyboard. And the third one is going to be to control the size of the text appearing on the screen. And yeah, the final part here, USB to micro USB cable to connect the controller to my computer so I can upload the sketch. Cool. Okay, so that's all from the hardware. And uh, now let's wire everything up. Okay, the buttons are wired up now. And as you can see, we've got all of them connected to the ground, right? To the minus rail here. It's the white, orange and uh, yellow wire. And on this side, we've got yellow wire going to D7, the blue wire here going to D6, and this black wire here going to D5. And now to the code. Here I've got Visual Studio Code opened on the project I've created yesterday, OLED screen. And uh, this is going to serve as a base today for me because yeah, part of this, this code I'm going to reuse in in today's one okay so um i recommend cloning that first if you want to repeat my steps here okay the link to the repository on the particular branch to get exactly same state of the code is in the description of the video and now yeah let's let's just start so first of all i'm gonna do some cleaning up and that is gonna be on the bitmap first because we're not gonna be displaying any bitmaps just text, right? So that is removed and row bitmap is not required here anymore either. Nice, okay. So that's the, the very base that we need to start working with, with that, with our buttons, okay? Um, and yeah, additionally, we need to set all of those buttons to input pull-up mode, right? That's quite important. So pin mode and we'll have D5, D6, D7. However, I don't really wanna use D5, D6, D7 as the names, as the names of the of the constants. 
and uh, uh, just you know for the for the sake of the uh, code cleanliness. So let me show you the idea I've got. So yeah, um, we're having three buttons on the board. The first button is going to be for typing. Okay, so maybe something like typing button. And that is D5, isn't it? The second one is going to be backspace. Okay, so I'm going to call it backspace button. That's, that is to remove the characters that we did input, right? So that's going to be our D6. And the last one is going to be um, size button. Okay, so this one is going to control the size of the text on the screen, right? So now that's gonna be more readable. We know what kind of buttons we're working with. And um, let me define the pin mode for all of those buttons, okay? And all of them are gonna be input pull up. So I'm just gonna do three lines in here. And we have input button, backspace button, and size button. Nice, okay. Right, so now that we have them in the input pull up, it would be nice to have some, some sort of helper function to tell when the button is pressed. Because if you remember from my very first videos, this is a bit tricky because it's not that when the button is pressed, we get a high reading on the voltage, but we get the low reading instead, right? Remember, pull up, pull down, okay? So it's, it's pulled up as a default, and that means it's high, okay? When it's pressed, it's low. So that is important. And uh, for that, I'm thinking about creating something very simple like is button pressed. Okay, and here is going to take, uh, I think this type is, uh, there is uint t. So uint 8t. And that is gonna be pin. Right, is button pressed, and that is just going to return digital read on that pin. But yeah, it's not void, it's going to be boolean. And it's gonna return the result of comparison between the digital read of, the, of that particular pin, and we're gonna check if this pin is low, okay? Because if it, if it is low, it's going to return that function is button press is going to return true and that means yes the button is pressed so so nice okay so we've got that covered as well right and now how can we make possible typing because yeah that's going to be the first one i'm going to focus on right so to type something we're going to need to have a text that we display on the screen right an empty one at the beginning. That's what I'm thinking about. So, so let's define maybe somewhere here a char. Let's call it text. It's gonna be char array, and it's going to be. Let's for now make it like five empty. Right, five spaces. Five spaces. This is our char text. I could potentially do some empty some some empty characters, but I can figure out it later. For now, for the sake of simplicity, let's make, let's make it empty. So on the screen, it's going to appear empty, right? So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is because we're going to be taking the input and we'll have a dynamic situation there, right? Something might change because of the buttons we press. We need to constantly checking for the change. And that means we're gonna have to use a loop function to continuously display the text, right? So we'll have, we, we're gonna use display text. That's the function I created yesterday. And here I'm just going to pass that text, okay? Text. Maybe I rename that text here. Let's call it T, maybe C as char pointer, okay? So we won't have, it shouldn't affect anything, but just, you know, 
to distinguish that text from the other text. Okay, so now we have text defined. We display it in a loop function, so that's just gonna be continuously displayed uh, on every single call of that loop function. And um, yeah, that, that is fine, right? We can even we can actually start from it. So that would be the first instruction on the loop function to display the text. But but now it's the time to to make it uh, possible to change it, okay? And for changing that, what we want to make sure in every single loop call. I'm gonna check if the button is pressed and that button is going to be typing button, right? So if the typing button is pressed, so yeah, let's think like, you know, more on the atomic level, right? So we have a single loop call. We display the actual text that is at the moment, this one, right? We're thinking about the first one, the first call of the loop, it is empty. So that is displayed. We see empty screen. There is nothing on the screen. And now let's let's consider the case. Right at the start, we have the button pressed, the typing button pressed. What should happen? What should happen? We should change that space to some symbol or character. Okay. And whenever we like, and as we keep pressing that button, we can like either keep keep it pressed or we just you know press again and again. What I would like to see is those characters changing, right? But at the same position, okay? At the same position, when I press, it's just going to change. And only if there is a delay, certain delay, let's say one second, maybe one, one and a half second, it's going to jump to the next position, okay? So imagine, imagine something like that. So these are all the five characters in here. Okay. And let's say I press the button. So the one appears on the screen. And I immediately press it again. So two appears on the screen. And I continue. It just, you know, changes all the characters. And as long as I don't have pause between the press, right? I don't release the button and wait one and a half second. These characters are going to change on every single press of the button. Or we can define some delay. So if I keep it pressed, let's say every 250 milliseconds, 250 milliseconds, that's, that's still going to change. Okay. But yeah, I'm going to demonstrate it um, once I finish this simple algorithm. Right. But yeah, anyway, what we can do, simplest solution is if the button is pressed, we can change the text. Okay. We can change the text on that position. For now, let's define it as zero, but it has to be a separate variable. And what I could essentially do is to do plus plus. Because char, char type is really a byte type. It's, it's, it's a number really, but it's displayed as the actual ca character. And if we increment it, it's just going to jump to the next character in the ASCII table. Okay. So if I do something like that, whenever I press the button, that, that first character, because at the moment we have a zero here, that first character is going to change to the next one in the ASCII table. In the ASCII table. So if, if we have space and the next one is comma or something, that's going to change to comma. You, you, you press again and that's going to keep changing. But now very important thing is to put a delay after that. If I put delay after that, 250 milliseconds, we won't have a situation where you, you just press for the fraction of the second, but you know, it's so many loop calls in that single, not really second, milliseconds, that you won't really be able to control the what you type because it's gonna just, you know, very fast, it's gonna change like all the characters, right? That's not something we want to do, so we want to have something um, slightly delayed. We want to have it slightly delayed, right? So yeah, so that'd be 250. And yeah, we don't want to use zero here because we want to we want to be able to uh, go to the next position. Okay, so I'm going to define the next maybe unsigned int and that is going to be a position. Okay, I'm going to call it position. It's going to be zero as a default. And that's what's going to happen. Whenever you press the typing button, the 
character changes, right? And we will be able to see it uh, on the screen immediately. And that happens for the particular position. Now we have the position defined as zero. But yeah, that's not everything. We still need to be able to jump to the next position, right? Once we pick the character for the first one, we want to see the next one. Okay, so I'm going to add it in a second. But for now, let's deploy this code. And let's see how it looks like on the screen, okay? Okay, the code deployed. Uh, let me test it quickly. So I'm going to press the button that, I, that I've added functionality to. And there we go, you see, exclamation mark. It starts actually from the special characters, I think because uh, we use the space as, a, as an empty character. But yeah, we've got the numbers and here we got the letters, okay? I think we can get this, this small, this is uppercase, we can, we can get lowercase as well. Yes, there we go. And also, if I keep the button pressed, that's just gonna switch every quarter of a second, right? So you can go through all of the characters, even the special ones, as you can see. Okay, cool. But yeah, uh, as I said, this is not the end because uh, now, now the, the way this works is um, it just uh, stays on the same position, on the position zero. So if I don't press the button for like a few seconds, I press it again, it's just gonna continue changing the characters at the position zero. And that's not something we want to do because what we want to do is if someone stops, like releases the button and wait one second and a half, that should jump to the next position so we can type the next character, right? It's not happening at the moment, but it's going to happen um, in a minute when I implement that functionality. So let's move back to the code. Okay, and now that we have a single character sorted, I'm going to implement a mechanism to jump to the next one, right? And that's something I've already mentioned. What I would like to do is to set a timer. The moment someone presses the button, the character changes, we want to set some sort of the timer. And when the time is up on that timer, it's gonna increment the position. Okay, and for that, we're gonna, we're gonna use a milis function. We're gonna use the milis function, but I need to define another character, another, uh, sorry, another variable. And let's call it, maybe let's call it, it has to be unsigned uh, long because it's a time in milliseconds. And let's call it next position time, right? Maybe I don't define it here. So we will have next position time. And because we're gonna have to be able to change the positions, you know, it's not just a single change. We cannot only rely on that single variable, I think, right? So um, it needs another one. Let's call it typing and set it, let's set it to false. So we'll have typing false. What does it mean? It's like a mode, right? When we're typing, we know we should check for the next position time. Okay, that's something like that. And let me show you, let me show you how to implement that in here. Okay, so when this happens, right? When that happens, the button is pressed. We want to set the next post time as a millis plus a specific specific delay and I said that would be one one and a half second right I'm gonna I'm gonna need to change those um, extract them as a variables okay but not now now it's fine can we we can have them like that so we set the next post time and we set the typing to true typing to true that means you know we started typing and in here, now we need another if that is going to check if we are typing. And if we are typing, if the next position time is less or equal to the actual millis, right? So this is setting the time in the future when we should jump to the next this is to define when we should jump to the next position. 
and this one is checking for that, right? So if it's in the typing mode and the next position time is now less or equal to millis, that's time to stop typing. So we're going to do typing false. We're not going to type anymore. And position is going to increase, right? So that's what happens. And with that code we have here at the moment, um, once I deploy it, we should be able to type, right? We should be able to type. It's not, it's not perfect. This is not the end again, because at the moment we can actually exceed the, the size of that char array I've got in here for the text. So this needs to have some sort of a guard in here. But um, yeah, let me deploy that, show you how it, how it works. And then we're gonna, we're gonna continue from there. Okay, code deployed, and now we will be able to see the typing functionality working. Okay, so let me start. So I'm gonna type something, whatever, this can be an yeah, ampersand character. I wait one second and a half, and then as you can see, we have a second character in here, right? So I can essentially type something. Again, I'm gonna wait and another, add another one, right? If I don't wait long enough, like uh, it's gonna be just one second, you see, that still changes the actual character unless I wait a little bit longer. And now you see, it jumped to the next one. Right, so in this way we can actually type something on the screen. Cool, okay, now let's go back to the code. Okay, now let's think about the delete, the backspace button, right? We have covered the this button. Yeah, I still remember we need to handle that, but uh, I'm gonna keep it like, like this for now, because as we're going to add the size functionality, right, for the third button to increase or decrease the size, the length of this text char array is also going to change, right? Because the bigger the text you have, the less characters you can display on the screen. So that's going to be something I'm going to have to handle in this code. And for now, I'm, I'm just going to forget about this until we get to the third button. And okay, so yeah, so now the second, the second button, the backspace. So for the backspace, we also need to have an if to check for the backspace button, right? If the backspace button is pressed, we need to distinguish two, two cases now. One case is when we are still typing. What does it mean? So I've just pressed the button and um, it's not that one and a half second passed. I'm still, I still can change the actual character at the actual position. So this is before we switch to the new position. So that's one case. The second case is when the position is incremented, right? So, so you typed something and you waited one second and a half and now the position is incremented, is the next position on the, on the, on the, on the screen. It's empty, but it's ready to, to, to be typed. So yeah, so we need to distinguish two situations and we can actually do it with the typing with the typing variable. So good that I introduced it, okay? So if we have the backspace button pressed and we have the typing set to true, what we want to do is to change the actual character to space, right? So position is not incremented yet. It's not incremented yet. Uh, one important thing is to switch typing to false, okay? so. If we are typing and we press the backspace, this time hasn't been reached yet. We want to stop typing because we don't want to increment the position anymore. And if we stop typing, we change it to false. This is never going to happen until we start typing again, right? And the next instruction is going to be text, pause, equals empty, right? Empty character, a space. So essentially that's gonna remove the actual character. 
So this is this is the typing situation handled. Um, is there anything we have to do? No, I don't think so, because we want to stay at the same position and let the user to continue typing. And now the second one, the second one is when we are not typing. Okay, so I can do else if. Maybe just else, but let me make sure if if we're not typing, then yeah, we, if we're not typing, what we want to do is to decrement the position and then remove it, right? Then change the, the actual one to space. Because essentially what happens is, let, let me show you. So let's say I type something in here. So I have A. I'm still typing. So if I, so at this point, if I press on the backspace, that should remove it, you know, change it back to space. So there is nothing on the screen. Second situation, the one I'm going to implement right now, is, let's say we have we have typed A and now the, the, the position is here. We haven't typed anything yet and we, want, we, and we press the backspace. So what we want to happen is the position to go back and remove the A. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to do pause, minus, minus, and then text pause equals nothing, right? And because this is duplicated, what I can do instead is to just do something like that. And we don't care about typing because typing is false anyway, so we don't need to change anything. Cool. Okay, so that should do. Again, this is not uh, handled 100% because we may have edge case when someone tries to press the backspace at the very beginning when we are at the position zero and we, we zero right and we shouldn't go back to minus one. I think the program is going to fail because that means uh, we're gonna go back to this is unsigned int so we're gonna we're gonna go to the maximum int if you uh, decrement that I I suppose so um, for that ideally. We want to check if the position is not zero, right? So that's, that should be position. It should be greater than zero, right? This is the only case we can do it. So yeah, so if we typing, then we change the typing to false. That's it. And if we uh, if we not typing, that means we want to go back. But um, if the position is uh, equal to zero, we basically want we don't want to de decrement position. But, you know, we can still change the actual one to an empty character. So, yeah, that should cover it. And that should be safe to do backspaces as many times as possible, even if we are at the position zero. And one important thing before I deploy is the delay. I forgot about. So we need to, ch we need to set it to 250. And you know what? Because we have 250 here as well. So maybe let's define a constant button delay 250 and I'm going to use them uh, use it in these places right okay yeah this is important because without the delay if we press the button it's going to remove everything right it's too fast it just runs it just uh, it runs mo more than once i mean the loop function runs more than once in a single millisecond so it's important to have the delay Okay, yeah, let's deploy it now and see how it works. Let's see if the backspace button is working, okay? So I'm gonna type something. Let's say uh, I have three characters in here, no matter what ones. They can be special ones, doesn't really matter, right? So yeah, we've got like some three characters. And now I would like to remove one of them, right? So now I made sure that it's not in the mode typing anymore, right? Because uh, one and a half second passed. And uh, let's see if it deletes the closing bracket. There we go, right? I'm going to press it again. So yeah, on this backspace is working. But what if I start typing? Let's say I start typing and I quickly press the backspace button while it is still in typing mode. So yeah, let me do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that seems like it's working, isn't it? Right. So no matter what mode it is, we've got the backspace button removing characters. Okay. So we're getting close to finish. 
the last button that's left is the size one, right? And for the size one, first of all, before I add another conditional, we want to look at the display text function because here that method is really determining the size of the text that we type. And we put three, right? I would like this to be controlled by the button. And in order to do that, I need to take um, uint8, right? That's the type of the, of the um, variable that you need to pass in there, a type of data that you need to pass in there. So I'm going to take that uint8 as size in here and pass to set text size. And outside of the function, I'm going to define a size variable that I'm going to set to three. So let's let's stick to what was there before, right? And that size three is going to be passed in the loop function. So we're really going to be controlling a size variable, right? Whenever the button is pressed. And for pressing the button, basically, I'm going to do it with the size button, right? The is button pressed, pass the size button. And in here, um, the, the, the simplest possible way to do that is to just increase the size, right? So we just do size plus plus. However, what if we get to the maximum one, right? If we get to the maximum one, I see it in the way that our screen goes back to the minimum, right? So it's not possible to, you know, increase the size uh, infinitely. And for that, I'm going to have to have an if statement in here, right? That checks if we haven't reached the maximum size, but we need to know what is the maximum size first. And how can we tell what is the maximum size? Let's have a look at documentation of the set text size method. Right, and as you can see here, 3 is 18 by 24. So probably 4 is going to be 24 by 32. In our screen, 128 by 32, that's going to be the maximum one. So something that can be calculated from here by taking the height, right, which is uh, 32 pixels in our case, and dividing it by 8, which is the one for one, right, for the one size. And that's going to give us the maximum size. And that's something I can easily do by first creating a constant for the width and height, right? I'm just going to start making this program more generic so it can work with different type of screens. So we've got that, we've got that. And we can get the maximum size. by taking the height and dividing it by eight. So that's gonna give us four, okay? And now easily going back to the if statement in here, I can just do, I can essentially do size equals size equals max size. And if this is the case, we're gonna go back to one and otherwise we want to increment, right? So we want to add the size to one. So that's what's going to happen, right? So if it's less than four, it's just going to add one to it. So it's going to be, you know, let's say it's two, it's just going to add one to it. So it's going to be three. But if it's four, it's going to go to one. So that's what happens in here. Yeah, and that's really the case for the button pressed. However, this is not, this is not finished yet. And the reason this is not finished is the length of that array in here. Okay. This is where it gets a little tricky because it gives us um, essentially many options we could implement that, right? So one option we could implement that sizing thing is um, let's consider an edge case. going to give you an example where someone sets a size to one so we can type more characters on the screen. And it types, you know, like five or six characters and then use the size button to increase the size to the maximum one. So the screen won't be able to display all the characters. We, we will just see, I think, four or five. That's it. 
And let's say there was like six, seven characters. We won't be able to see them. So what we should do in that case? Should we remove the, these characters from the text array? Or should we, you know, let them be there, but change the functionality of the backspace button to like, you know, remove all of those that are not visible on the screen when you press it or have some um, a special icon shot on the screen saying that you know there is something more or even better what we could do is um, maybe scroll like create a scroll effect on the screen so you know the the actual text would go from the left to the right right showing us the entire text you know there is many options and um, I'm going to leave it up to you how you want to implement that. Uh, what I am going to do is to keep that um, text array uh, fixed size. Okay. And I think, I think five characters in here. I think this is four. I think we could do five characters. And with five characters... That is going to be the maximum we can get for the maximum size. So I'm going to go with the five and I'm going to deploy that code. Let me just quickly review it again. So, so yeah, uh, what's going on? So yeah, display text. That seems all fine is button pressed. And in here, this three, that comment is not required anymore. And in here we've got this uh, conditionals, so one conditional to to increase the position. Okay, so this is the one that we have to still take care, take care about. That's something I actually almost forgotten. So let's do a simple if in here. Uh, or, or maybe even better, what we could do is to check if the position, if the position equals to maximum size uh, not the maximum size on the if it's the the length of the text so if the position is less than than the the length of the text minus one right then we want to increase it Otherwise, we want to keep the same position. Okay, so that's what's happening in here. That is important. So we want to have the situation where we get out of range of that array, right? Of the text array. So that's one thing to improve. Um, another I've just realized on the size, size button, we need to add a delay. And that's going to be with the button delay. Okay, backspace button, typing button. Okay, yeah, I think this is it. I can deploy it now and test that code. Okay, deployed. So yeah, let's test um, two things, right? We want to see if the size is working. So for that, I'm gonna have to type something. Let's type like anything. Maybe we add some numbers this time. Okay, and one more. Okay, that's fine. And let's see if this button is working. There we go, right? So, oh yeah, and now it goes to the smallest one. Right, so the size button is working as it's supposed to do. Um, one more thing I can check is to see what is the maximum amount, maximum number of characters we can have on the screen. But for that, I'm going to go to the size 3. And let's see what happens if I get to this one. So now I think I have a five. Okay, yes. So it's not possible to type anymore. Even if, even if I wait, right? And I start typing it again, it just changes the last one, okay? Yeah, let, let me try to, to, to do backspace now. Okay. Yeah, okay, so the zero is left. We have a bug in the code. And I think I know what this bug is about, like what's the cause of the problem. Let me switch back to the code and, and, and fix it. Let me fix that issue quickly. 
Uh, this, I think, happening in the backspace button conditional, right? It is about the backspace. And uh, uh, what is happening in there is basically uh, this post minus minus changing the cursor back to the previous one, right? When we get to the last one, the post minus minus goes to the to the the one to the last minus one, and then removes that, leaving the last one still on the screen, right? So it's this post minus minus with a connection to this bit, right, to this bit. So we have this guard to not go any further in position. But because of that, when we type the last character, the typing changes to false, the position stays the same. And because it stays the same and typing is false, that instruction is run, okay? That instruction is run, so... Um, what we're going to have to do is to add additional condition here. And uh, ideally that condition would be, let me think about that. Um, I think that would be on the character itself. So if I do text pause equals an empty a space, right? An empty character a space. That should fix the issue because um, basically what is going to happen if we get to the last character that is going to make sure that last character, the position we've got at the moment as it should be paused by the way the position we've got at the moment is an empty one, right? And only if it's an empty one we can go back, right? We should the, decrease the actual position and remove the previous one. And if it's all the way around, so that's the actual case for the um, screen filled with the characters, right? Five characters, maximum number on the text variable. And the last one not being an empty one, right? So in that case, we just want to remove that character. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I can deploy it now and uh, let's see if that fixes the bug. Deployed. Let's have a look now. So I'm gonna type something on the screen. Again, I need five characters in here. Doesn't really matter what kind of characters they are. Okay, so I've got five characters now. Let me just confirm. Yeah, so that's the last one you can type. Okay, cool. And now we waiting one second and a half, so that should be it, and let's remove. Okay, so that removes the last one, and yeah, I can just continue removing those. Let me confirm if the size is working. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, that is working. Let me add another one, just quickly remove it, continue removing. Try to remove more. And type again. Okay, yeah, so that seems like it is working, right? There is still a room for improvement though, as I said before, uh, we can basically figure out how to display more characters on the screen, right? So we could have some scrolling functionality, like increase, we could increase the number of characters we can type, and then if the size is the maximum one and they cannot fit on the screen, we could have some sort of scrolling, right? But I'm gonna leave it up to you. Um, I like the functionality I've got at the moment, so um, I think for the sake of demonstration, uh, this is enough. And this is it for today. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how to display information downloaded from the internet. And for the day after tomorrow, I'm preparing something special. So yeah, stay with me. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like my content, so you will stay up to date with my channel. Thanks for today, and see you tomorrow.